Okay, wow. This is much scarier than I thought. History. How utterly boring and useless it can be. All the pain and memorizing paragraphs and paragraphs of facts and dates. The anxiety leading up to an exam that demanded your knowledge of historical period extending hundreds or thousands of years. The struggle in finding the motivation in learning a subject that you see has no use or relevance in our daily lives. But oddly, but oddly, do I find joy in studying history. I joke with joy as I flip through my history book and enter a new realm, a new period of the past. I often find myself immersed and gazing as my history teachers, Ms. Moe, Ms. Redwick, speak so passionately about a Tudor dynasty or the Bolshevik regime. But then, my friends don't particularly like history. Some would even say they hate it with a passion. So here I am, setting the record straight. History can be fun, can be enjoyable, can be useful, and can be relevant if and only if we approach and see history the right way. You see history as a subject about fleeing bubbles, indicating the year an event happened or the number of casualties in a side of war. You see history as a subject about writing extensive essays, narrating the sequence of affairs, or recounting the consequences of the causes that spur a movement. But no, history is not meant to test your ability to memorize facts and regurgitate dates and events. It requires deeper thinking and necess necessitate a sense of exploration. As historians and students studying history, you are not a regurgitator, but you are an explorer. You're exploring the days that have passed and the days that still need to be explored. Okay, but you may ask, what is there to explore in a subject that's filled with facts? History, contrary to many belief, is not filled with facts and dates, and is not set in stone. Historians do debate over the events of the past and argue whether our inherent or perceived ideas of the past actually relate to truth. This is because it's hard to state the truth in history. Some would argue there are no truth in history at all. Once a moment has come and gone in history, there are no means of knowing exactly what occurred. We humans claim to know the truth about history based on our study of historical evidence, such as the study of eyewitness report, diary entry, or any written document. But these historical evidence are biased. They each represent one and only one biased perspective of the past. The assessing a judicial court where the defendant and the prosecutor put forth the perspective of the truth, the truth that benefit their client, people record the past to solely benefit them. Humans in the past, no different from us, were flawed human beings. We record the events of the past based on the truth that accorded with the belief. When presented with an event with opposing interpretation, they subconsciously weigh the pro and con before advocating for the truth that further the agenda. Such as, let's take for example, a Nazi officer or Nazi sympathizer would surely paint the Nazi regime in a much better life, light than would a member of the many persecuted group such as the Gypsy or the Jews. This history is therefore based on biased evidence. Thus, the study of history requires the examination of the past under the microscope. Only through the lenses of the microscope do we filter out the past experiences and gain a deeper, clear, and more impartial perception of the past. But now, the historical evidence we study under the microscope still remains only one and only one perspective of the past. It is only one jigsaw historians use to complete the bigger picture that is our knowledge of history. So students, through your employment of skills in historic classes, such as interpreting events through collection of historical evidence, identifying bias of the recorder of the past, and reaching a substantiated or evaluative judgment, you're actually defining and shaping history. The key to enjoy history is to understand that history is evolving and that you are not a bystander in the subject. Okay, now that I have argued that history is like no other subject, there's still two questions that need to be answered to help students enjoy and see history in a better light. 
these two questions are, what is the point of history, and how does it relate to you? In history classes, don't you struggle to associate yourself with the people and the event of the past? How could you, a high school student, expect to relate to the English king who reigned 500 years ago? The king, to your information, had six wives and beheaded two of them. How could you, a high school student, expect to relate to the pompous queen of France, the queen who, in face of the salvation of her masses, inconsiderably and infamously voiced, let them eat cake? This is one of the reasons why students find it hard to enjoy history. They're unwilling to step into the shoes of the people of the past because the people are different from them because they see no reason to. But the study of history is not a study about the society and people removed from you. The people you study, you do relate to. This relation is not based on a, a shared rep- preference or a national identity. It's identity that we all share regardless of our skin color, sexual inter- orientation, or gender. It's a shared identity called humanity. We are all living collective. We're all collective living stories of the past. Take for a few example. We live in societies with complex culture, with complex culture, tradition, and religion that have not been created at the spur of the moment. We use technologies and obsess with devices that we ourselves have not created. We are all individuals who are born with a personal variant, with a genetic template, the genome, that has evolved through the entire lifespan of the human species. Learning history is essential in learning the condition of being part of humanity, being humans, being you. When we see, study the succumb of many Germans in the Nazi regime, we understand that our fear is often greater than our urge to rectify errors, especially when it does not concern us or threaten the livelihood of our family. When we study the Cold War, we understand that through our unwillingness to understand other ideology and beliefs, we create division, thereby fracturing the world we live in. When we study the French Revolution or the selfish movement, we understand that oppressed will always rise and that we are capable and unstoppable when collectively empowered for the fight for equality. Human conditions now are no different than human conditions were in the past. Science and technology advance. Biologically, human, animal, and nature evolve and society shifts and changes in ideologies, but human condition never seems to change. Learning history is therefore learning about yourself. Learning history also enables you to understand that you are not rootless people living rootless lives. You're able to place yourself in a spectrum as history of mankind. You see yourself as the part of the millennials, the empowered generation making swift changes for years to come. You see yourself as the spearhead of a movement, uh, be it political, social, or art. You see yourself as no different from any historical figure, those who were once in your shoe to make call for changes. History is therefore not unrelatable. It is also not purposeless, as history allows you to learn from mistakes. I see a raise of hands here. Who in the audience have made mistakes in their study, relationship, or life in general? And how many of those have learned from the mistakes, have therefore tried to improve themselves? Learning history is no different from learning from the mistakes we make in our daily lives. We make mistakes in our practice tests, so we won't make the same mistake in our final exams. That's no different but how we learn from the mistakes made by the people in the past, so we, people in the present, evade making the same errors. But yes, as part of the human race, we do take the same course of action in response to spur an event. The examples now now mentioned are not all particular mistakes, but to support the idea that we're all participants in the repeated cycle of history. We elected the authoritarian and nationalist leader Donald Trump as a backlash to globalism, similar to the people in the past who elected Dennis Kearney, a politician who was known to denounce Chinese immigrants as a cause of the white economic woes. We, 
as the international community failed to provide immediate and effective measure to halt the Rohingya genocide in Myanmar, just as the UN failed to, provide, to anticipate and prevent the genocide in Rwanda. But to defy this cycle of repeated history, it is crucial to understand history, because those who cannot remember history are more prone or doomed to repeat it. As I ponder over this quote, as I write my speech, actually, I realize this quote is incomplete or flawed. It is flawed in its suggestion that history is only full of, mis full of mistakes. But it's as fair to say, those who cannot remember history won't be able to improve the present. History introduces us to the many ideas, introduces us to the solution to the problems of the present. It introduces us to the many ideas that we need for sufficiently invisible in the world we see today. Although we are obsessed with the present and relentlessly try to lead towards the future through innovation and science, many of the things we need to sustain, nourish, and aspire to move forward are the things in the past. The study of the Giza Pyramid, one of the, one of the architectural wonders of the world, may inspire architectural innovation. The study of the Roman and ancient Greek civilization the cornerstone of many modern society may, may answer some of the troubling questions we have right now about our current state of democracy and government. History is therefore neither unrelatable to you or purposeless. So now, I call you to see history as a journey, engaged in the possibility to explore history, partake on adventure of the past, surmount the mountain of past experiences, and gain a deeper and clearer impartial, impartial perception of what the people were in the pa past. Remember that the trail you take, you are not taking alone. Humanity took the same trail as you. And as you step, you step into the shoes of the people in the past, the people who are no different from you. And as you reach the destination of your journey to the past, you look back and learn from the mistakes, and you look forward ready to make change. Be empowered to define and shape history. Be empowered to be part of history. And be empowered to learn from and change history. Thank you.